Are you prolonging your stay in the wilderness? Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'll be sharing with you 12 instructions from the Lord. Instructions from the Lord are directly linked to us obtaining the promises and the blessings from the Lord and even the gift of kingdom marriage, okay? Now, it is possible to ignore, to overlook, to downplay and to prioritize some instructions over others. As I share my story and my journey in, in following the instructions, I believe that you will get to, um, I believe that you will get to see where I went wrong and where you perhaps are going wrong. You know, you can, you can use me as a mirror. All right. Because the, the wilderness season or the preparation is not going to be shortened. It is not going to, to be shortened. It, it can rather be prolonged and it is prolonged by us. We are not waiting on God. No, God is waiting on us. The blessings are waiting on us. Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is kind. He's patient. He's waiting on us. Okay. There are instructions that the Lord give us that we tackle like a pro. And then there are some instructions we get and we act like we have hearing problem or amnesia. Okay. But now God is willing and is ready to wait for us for his, for his will to be accomplished. And there are some instructions that the Lord give us that expose certain things in our hearts, which requires us um, to correct. All right. But sometimes the confusion starts in the way that the instructions are given. Um, instructions come through dreams and visions, unctioning of the heart, a gentle nudge, a still small voice, an impression, a conviction, feeling led to say or to do something, having a thought or an idea, especially if the thought is repeated in different ways or through different people. Your spirit confirming a word or an audible voice of God. This is just some of the, the, the ones that I chose, guys. But you know how the Lord speaks to you. Amen. Um, and I'm talking about instructions you got from the Lord. Not from your mom or dad. Not from your cousin. Not from your brother. Not from Sister Pentecost at church. And not from Evangelist Jeremiah. I'm talking about instructions directly from the Lord. Amen. Okay. I'll be sharing 12. So let's get to it. The first instruction. It's a call to a life of holiness, of purity and repentance. Now, we need to live a life of holiness and purity so we can receive and maintain the blessings. Hallelujah. Now, this is the basic and the foundation upon which we build our Christian walk. This is the very basic. This is the foundation. I had to say this. I had to get this out the way. Amen. Now, the second one. The second instruction, the Lord told me to wish my kingdom spouse a happy birthday. That's all I had to do. Okay, now I did not have to call the man. All I could have done was just to send a message. But it was hard for me because we were not really talking at, at that time. Okay, so I thought to myself, this is, the, this is unlike me. This is unlike me, you know. So I thought to myself, okay, if I can just find my way to go around this and to maneuver my way and to try and convince the Lord otherwise, okay. So now the instruction was clear, but it was hard for me to execute. I found myself arguing with myself the whole day. In the morning, I could have sent a message. I didn't. Okay, I just chose not to. In the afternoon, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Now in the evening, I was really just trying to convince myself otherwise. Okay, and then at night, I, I, could, I couldn't send the message at night, guys. I couldn't send the message at night. Okay. So now, the, that whole day, that entire day, that entire day, all I was doing was just thinking about the person, praying about the person, and all I had to do was just to send the message and get things done. But no, I had to make it drag on. Guys, I was acting like a prodigal. I got to know how it feels like to be a prodigal. I got to walk in the prodigal's shoes for a few days. I thought this was going to last for a day, but my disobedience was going to carry me on into the next coming days and guys i was going through the most now please let this be an encouragement to someone you need to know and to understand 
that if the Lord has told your kingdom spouse to do something or to say something to you and they don't, they go through the most, okay? And I'm testifying to the fact, okay? Now, with me, the thing is, uh, I'm conservative. I did not want to appear desperate or thirsty. I mean, with me, I was like, I'm the daughter of Elohim. You know, I'm the daughter of Zion. I want to appear like a woman of essence, you know? But look, guys, disobedience is, dis is disobedience. And some can even call this pride, okay? But for me, it was just hard, okay? It was just hard to, to do this to do this instruction so understand that some instructions will tackle like a pro and some you struggle so in the end i disobeyed and what happened i was plagued now the following day there i was i was feeling sad i was feeling sorrowful and now this feeling turned into guilt okay and then the guilt now turned into into pain but it was the pain of rejection and I was like, why am I feeling this way? Was he expecting me to wish him a happy birthday? And now I was feeling, now I was really feeling bad, okay? But now I could still take my phone and send uh, the message, but I didn't. So to cut, a long story sto to cut a long story short, I was going through the most, okay? Because now when the Lord tells you to do something and you don't do it, that thing will just keep popping. It will just keep popping up in your head. Like, I went through the most. I really went through the most. Now, I did repent and I asked the Lord for forgiveness. Guys, I just wanted peace. I just wanted to breathe again. I just wanted peace. I, like, look, I've got no grudges against the men. But I really, I really did not want to think about the men all day. Okay? So the Lord did have mercy on me. Okay? Yeah. So in this kingdom, in the kingdom of God, we need to operate like sons and daughters of the Lord. We need to be willing to let go of our earthly thoughts and way of doing things, okay? We need to be willing to learn things, to unlearn things, and to relearn some things, amen? And it's amazing to me how some people expect their kingdom marriage journey to mirror the, the characters in the Bible. I feel they just isn't enough characters for all of us to fit in this okay needless to say that we are uh needless to say that we are in the end times we are that generation that is preparing the that is preparing the coming of the lord these mass weddings are ushering the, the coming of our lord jesus christ the bride for his church uh what the, the mass weddings that are coming are ushering the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the groom, coming to be united with his bride, the church. There. <laughs> okay. I've got a tongue twister there. Now, let us not box God. Everybody's journey is different. I mean, look at the calling of the disciples, guys. Their calling was different. And if you feel that's a norm and that's how things are supposed to be, that's how the old disciples are supposed to be called, but that's just boxing the Lord. Look at how Paul was called, okay? And we can all agree that he was just exceptional, all right? So why do we expect our journey to be the same? The kingdom spouses that came before us had their journey. We are like the Pauls who said, who said our journey is supposed to mirror them exactly. Guys, guys, anyhow... I believe that you can believe whatever you want to believe at the end of the day. So long as you're in God's will and you're doing what God said you must do, that's fine. Okay. Because some people you see, um, they walk around with rings, still single. The Lord told them to wear rings. That's fine. The problem would be now, if I see so-and-so wearing a ring, then I go purchase myself a ring and I wear it in public. You know, for another person, an act of faith would be to go get the ring and wear it at home. Do you see? So let us be careful what we mirror and understand that the Lord is very flexible. He's very creative. Let us not box the Lord. Okay. So if the Lord tells you to do something, please, let's try not to reason things out. Let's try not to reason things out. Um, I think I'm ready to go on to the next one. The third one, the third instruction was a call to deeper devotion. The Lord was calling me deeper into the word. 
deeper into praise and worship, deeper into prayer, into prayer, meaning less TV, meaning less social media, amen, less socializing, okay, well, a lot of us are still coming out of the wilderness, so, so the, so, the, uh, the, the social life is not really like happening much, <laughs> it's not really happening much, okay, but social media and the social media and, and television, okay? So, and understand that some instructions of the Lord are ongoing. We cannot come to a point where we say, well, I did one, check, two, check, three, check. I'm just chilling. No. Like this call to devotion, it just means now I have to lean more onto the Lord. But that is an ongoing instruction. And the Lord is trying to get these in place, get them solidified. So when the business starts, when the project starts, when the kingdom spouse comes, you are already rooted and grounded in that, okay? Yeah, so you can, so the Lord sits at the throne and the other things will just have to find their slots around the Lord and not vice versa. Amen. Um, our devotion to the Lord must be solid, okay? Now the fourth one, the Lord told me to spring clean. Now, this fourth instruction is what inspired me to make this video. I came across a YouTuber who said the Lord told her to spring clean. I'm like, oh, wow. And then I heard the second one and, and I was like, oh, wow. So it means a lot of the instructions the Lord has given us are very similar. Okay. Not all, of course. Okay. So I was, I was praying, it was, just, it was during my devotion time that I had a vision of myself moving furniture and I was spring cleaning and it was clear that the Lord was saying you need to spring clean because now the old is gone now you need to start on with the new okay so yeah the fifth instruction was the instruction to move now I'm originally from Gauteng I'm from Johannesburg I'm a city girl born and bred in Joburg and now the Lord instructed me to move five hours from Gauteng. So I'm a, I'm a city girl gone rural. Okay. So the circumstances motivated me to move because I, I, um, I had cold feet. Everything was just decided. Everything was done. But when I had to move, then I started having second thoughts and all I needed was that last push. The 2020 chaos gave me that last push that I really, really needed. Okay. It's amazing how circumstances help us to know the will of God. If you don't know um, which way to turn, sometimes you just have to look at the circumstances. If you cannot go to the left or the right, then all you can do is just, just, just remain. It's just to sit there. The Lord is saying, sit, just be still, you know? And if all the other routes are closed, the only route open is the one in front of you. Then God is saying, go on ahead. Take the route in front of you. Amen. Circumstances make it easier for us to be able to, to, to understand what the Lord wants us to do, okay? Um, so moving was the beginning of my awakening. Of course, I began to walk in my calling um, in my, and in my giftings like never before. My dreams, my visions was just in another level. Now, obviously, everything was heightened because of my deeper devotion unto the Lord, okay? Yes. I was just going deeper and deeper, okay? What does, I don't know what deeper and deeper means to you. To me, deeper and deeper means um, just more time with the Lord. Like, if I was going an hour, then I'll be pushing to two hours. From two hours, I'll be pushing into three hours, okay? And for those of you who feel called to be praying for hours and hours, I just want you to know that it may sound crazy, but a lot of the Lord's instructions just don't make sense to us. Don't compare your walk with someone else. If someone else prays an hour and they are good, they are not you. You know, it's the Lord that knows the calling upon your life, okay? So just do what the Lord has put in your heart, okay? The devil will never put the desire to pray. <laughs> no, not happening. Um, the sixth instruction, fasting. A call to a, to a life of fast was like, okay, look, I've always fasted, but per necessity. 
So to take fasting as a, a way of life, I was like, okay, there are some spiritual and physical benefits. So I'm up for it. Okay. Yeah. And now the seventh instruction, the Lord told me to purge. There are things I needed to let go of. The Lord wants us to purge and to make room for the new. It is also a, 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 a good act of faith. Okay. It is good to declutter every once in, in a while. We need to let the house breathe, guys. Okay. Um, so we're ready for the eighth. The fifth instruction was to move. The seventh fasting. The sixth fasting. The seventh to purge. Yeah, the eighth. The eighth instruction was to take care of my health. The Lord told me to eat better to take care of my health and to just just to take care of my body in terms of like resting enough eating well exercising okay now i've had several dreams in which i saw myself very youthful i could say i looked much better than i did in my prime years so when the lord said he will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten the lord wants to restore the years that were lost the years that were wasted guys god is not playing God is, God is not playing. This, this refers even to, to, to your youthness. You need the youthness, the energy to be able to, to, to fulfill your purpose, to be able to do that which the Lord has put in your heart. That ministry, that project, that business. Amen? You need energy. I've had so many dreams about me looking youthful. And I'm still looking for more um, YouTubers to come up and say, guys, I dreamt I looked younger. I was my age, but I looked so much younger. I looked better than I did in my prime years. I just looked better. I was more vibrant, more energetic, just more, li just more lively, guys. Amen. But of course, let us put in the work and the Lord will bless the work of our hands. Amen. The ninth instruction was to open a YouTube channel. Okay. This was one of the hard ones for me. Okay. I'm a very reserved person. I very much love my space. Okay. Now, I'm not even that big on social media, guys. All right. So, I'm that person. When I, when I wake up in the morning and I've had a dream, um, my family and I will just share uh, the dreams we had. We praise the Lord for them. You know, but this is one of that of those dreams that I just sat on. I just kept quiet. I I don't want to share it. I just I just kept it to myself. Okay. Now after a few days, then I was I was I was able to share with the family, and they were shocked. And I was like, "Well, I'm not ready. Okay, I'm not ready." But do you see now? How, how instructions come and we are not ready. So we cannot say that we're waiting on the Lord. It's the Lord who waits on us. It's this kind of things that cause delays because the Lord will wait. The Lord will wait. Okay. Now, understanding now that I'm the background to the background wall and now there's this calling to, to, to start a YouTube channel. It was hard. And this is how it happened. I had a dream. I just saw myself making a YouTube uh, video. Okay, so guys, I wanted to obey the Lord. Yes, it took me months. It, yes, it took me months to to come, to be able to come to that. But I, I never really buried it. It was something I was working on. I was looking at other YouTubers like, okay, girl, you can do it. It's for the Lord. Like the Lord will bless you. It's for the Lord. Do you understand? So here I am, guys. Here I am. Okay. And this is actually my e mm, uh, okay. No, sorry. The thing is with the with with my videos name, even if I have a dream, I never just get it out. What I will do, I'll be writing notes, I'll be praying on it. Everything is pre-recorded. That's what I'm trying to say. It's pre-recorded, okay? And which ones do I release? It, it will depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's that's how I work, okay? So God is patient. He really does wait for us, okay? Uh, I'm ready for number 10. I think I've said all I needed to say concerning 
the YouTube channel. Okay. The 10th instruction. Now, with the, with the, okay. The 10th instruction, the Lord told me to space from my kingdom spouse. Now, at this time, my kingdom spouse and I were actually talking. But we kept on bumping heads every once in a while. And it was not rocket science. I just saw this coming. And when the Lord told us to, to space, it was hard. But you know when you keep disobeying the Lord and he's telling you to get out of the situation, he'll get you out of the situation, okay? Yeah, so we are not really um, talking at this time of the recording of this video. So many who have been separated from their kingdom spouses, you know that you're not alone. There's many of us. We've heard many testimonies of kingdom marriages, but an even larger numbers of people are still in waiting. So let that be an encouragement. Amen. Um, some someone might ask, why does the Lord really just um let the spouses meet if they are going to go apart? Look, you never know what a person is going through. Sometimes just them being around your presence can just mean a lot. It can just give them that courage to push. Okay, and then being with you, especially if the Lord has revealed you to the person, you are able to see like, okay, the Lord showed me ABC. It's, it's, it's an encouragement that the Lord showed me ABC about the person. It is true. It is true. Okay, it is nice to be able to see what the Lord has shown you in dreams like manifest before you. That the Lord did say the person is like this. The, the Lord did tell me that the person likes to eat this. And you get to see all of that, guys. It's, it's beautiful, okay? And it's, it's, it's actually quite comforting to the heart. Like when you wait, you know what you're waiting for. You know who you're waiting for. Amen? The 11th instruction, the Lord said, do not stop learning, okay? The Lord told me to continue. Now, I had two visions. The first vision, I saw myself at home. Now, all I saw was my hands and a bookshelf, a shelf full of books. I, I just saw myself reaching out to the, to, the, um, to the books, but I didn't really get to pick one, okay? Now, waking up, I understood clearly. The Lord was saying, girl, you got to read, okay? Educate yourself. Do not stop, all right? Um, now, I had the second one. And in the second vision, I saw myself at the mall. I was at a bookstore. Again, the focus, the, when I say the focus, it means the only thing I saw was my hands, the, the hands of the salesman and the books in front of us. Now, I was just going through books and there was one big black book in particular that I went for. So I went for it and I started to pace, came through it and I was, I was intrigued and I wanted the book. But now... The salesman kept on bringing on his, these other books, his recommendations. And I was like, sir, I would love this book. It's okay. L leave those ones. I just want this book. I ended up purchasing this big black book. I was so happy and so pleased with myself that I got that book. And guys, no, it is not the, it is not a Bible, okay? And no, no book is going to replace the word of God. Amen? Yes. Um... So the Lord was just saying, um, keep educating yourself, keep learning, do not stop, okay? Keep learning, keep growing, keep educating yourself. Now, okay, that's done. The thing is, there are people who could say, um, the Lord has called me to, the Lord has called me to business. The Lord has called me into business. Now, my question would be, um, how many, how many books have you read? How many books have you read on, on running a business? How many books have you read on leadership? Leadership, do you have any leadership skills um, you need to work on? You know? And some may say, well, the Lord has called me to kingdom marriage. A lot of these kingdom marriages are will be blended families. Guys, please, my notes sort of got mixed up, okay? <laughs> I'll be sorting them out while explaining, okay? A lot of these kingdom marriages will be from blended families, okay? So now, if these marriages are from, if they will be blended uh, families, then how many books have you read on blended family? How many books have you read on marriage? How many, as a man, how many books did you read which tells you more about the, the woman? 
the thinking of a woman, how a woman thinks, and as a as a woman, how many books have you read? How many books have you read to prepare you to understand how does a man think? You can't just think, well, well I, I have the Holy Spirit. The people who wrote the books have the Holy Spirit in them. I'm talking about Christian books, guys. When I say books, I'm talking about Christian literature. And you don't have to just limit yourself to Christian literature because not all not not all of us will be going into um into ministry deep like that. Okay, some would will, will, will be needing um like I said, people called into the corporate world, into the business world, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so be encouraged, guys. Like we need to read, we need to read. We are all called to different things. Some are called to the arts, okay? That's their giftings, the anointing is there. Some are called into business. Now imagine now if you're called into the arts and you never really practice, you never really work on the gift. See, we need to keep working the gift. The last, the 12th instruction, the Lord told me to get a gift for my kingdom spouse. Now, the Lord made it easy for me, he told me exactly what to get, okay? Down to the color, guys. So there was a time I had a chance to go to the mall I went to the mall, yours truly, got to the mall. Now, when I got to the mall, there was like a million and one options, guys. I was like, I know that the Lord did tell me what to get. Like, I, I'm aware, but like, this reminds me of Esther when she was told by the eunuch, like, when you go to see the king, carry this, you know? She didn't try to argue with the man or to try and give her, uh, to give him advice. She just, she, she humbly, um, obeyed okay the lord is kind guys when we mess up he really does give us a chance to rectify all right so now there i was at the mall i saw all this a million and one options i was confused i wanted to get this and mix it with that and then this would look nice would 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 would, would go nice nicely packaged with this and then the next thing i was confused i didn't know what, what i should get what i should leave and guess what happened in the end? I left with nothing. I left with nothing. And I was just home. Now, when I was at home, I thought to myself, had I just got what the Lord told me, I'd be happy. I would just be happy. So again, let us be encouraged. Let us stick to what the Lord told us. Stop expecting other people to understand. I don't care that they are Christians. The Lord didn't speak to them. Okay? It's good that so and so sees visions. Well, that's good for her. But the Lord has told you what they told, what 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 He told you. Work on your own visions, on your own dreams, okay? And stop feeling this need of explaining yourself. This explaining, this explaining. It's just hard to it's just hard to understand why the Lord is telling you to, to to do something. Let alone explain it to someone else. If the Lord told you to do something, just do it. Just just do it, guys. Just do it. Part of being in the wilderness was also to just um sharpen up leadership leadership uh leadership skills to just be contained being by yourself doing things your own way and trusting in the in the way that you've picked that this is fine this is right this is okay it will work out in the end amen no needing approval no needing support um or uh, people to affirm things no if god has spoken it then it then it then it's done it is done amen um before i'm timed out of this video i just wanted to encourage you um to say that faith without works is dead and with what the lord has shown you what I, what have you done like if the lord perhaps has promised you a dream job it's not a bad idea to go out and get and buy yourself a nice shirt or a tie if god has promised you a home it won't hurt to go buy yourself a rug, a rug for your new home. If God promised you fruit of the womb, you can go buy a few items, a few baby items, or you can buy, you can go buy um, maternity nightwear. You know, things you can do at home, things that you don't have to do in public, which will cause people to ask, like, what's going on? Because part of the wilderness teachings was to for us to just learn to be quiet, to work out things in silence, and not do things that will arouse questions okay look not everybody's story is different i'm not in any, in any way disregarding people who are doing their acts of faith in public please please 
I know what it is to be told by the Lord to do something in public. And that's just a video for another day. So I totally get it. I totally get it. Okay. I can never ever say the Lord did not tell you that. All I'm advising against is our hurt mentality to say it happened like this to so and so. Then I should follow suit. It should happen to me also. All right. Um, guys. The one, uh, the hardest instruction for me was the 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 YouTube channel thingy. So my advice to the anyone who's been called to to make a a YouTube video, to make a YouTube channel, um, I beg your pardon. Is um is for you to just take it from me. I mean, look at me. I was never really interested in this, and now I'm just comfortable, and I'm just getting more and more comfortable, and trying to release more videos of me in person rather than just doing voiceovers so please remember the lord called you he knows what he put inside of you he knows how to draw it out he will not ask you that which he knows you cannot accomplish thank you so so much guys love you god bless bye